the Honorable Leader of the Opposition. This may have been Aaron O'Toole's last speech in the House as Conservative leader. This is not a time for hollow words and rhetoric. Monday night, while speaking on Ukraine, challengers delivered a letter signed by 35 MPs calling for the end of O'Toole's leadership. MPs will cast a secret ballot on Wednesday morning. If 60 of them, more than half of the caucus, vote in favour, O'Toole will be out. Behind the scenes, O'Toole and his team have been working the phones looking for support among Conservatives. In a statement, he said, I'm not going anywhere. It is time for a reckoning. When talking with MPs in public, it's not clear how the vote will go. I'm supporting Aaron O'Toole. I think we need uh, new, strong, principled leadership uh, that, uh, that will allow our caucus uh, to move together, united, going forward. I think that perhaps that's the leader has some thinking to do. Does he deserve to stay? Yes. Why? Why? So, why? Why not? Okay. What, do you, what, do you what do you make of what's Just because you've got a bunch of angry Shearites out there, that's the problem. But privately, sources tell CBC News some anti-O'Toole MPs are confident they have the votes to remove him. O'Toole has been losing support in caucus since the last election when the party failed to gain seats. Many say he wasn't authentic or consistent on his messaging, flip-flopping on things like banning assault weapons and the carbon tax. So if Mr. O'Toole loses, the rule says he has to go. Uh, but if he wins, then he's got a lot of uh, fence mending and, and, uh, and bridge building to do. So this isn't going away anytime soon. But many Conservatives are already prepared to move past O'Toole. And discussions have now focused on who will replace him as the new interim leader. Hannah Thibodeau, CBC News, Ottawa. For more on this, let's turn to our chief political correspondent, Rosemary Barton. And Rosemary, from what you've heard, how is the vote going to play out tomorrow? I, I wish I knew, Ian. <laughs> and, and I have to tell you that no one that we've been speaking to through the day exactly knows what's going to happen tomorrow, whether they're pro O'Toole or not. O'Toole and others have been making calls today to try and get a sense of where support is at for him. But the question is really, what is the threshold it, it, to allow him to stay? And it is different depending on who you ask, meaning even if he does win tomorrow, how does he move forward? Remember, those 35 MPs who have signed this letter will become known by the leader and the rest of caucus tomorrow to say nothing of the people who might be saying, well, thing to me, but using a secret ballot to make their real views known. So how do you get those detractors back on side? How do you unite a caucus that's not behind you or not all behind you anyway? How is that sustainable? It's really hard to see how that happens. It's not impossible, but it would be very different, uh, difficult politically. And, and what does this mean more broadly for the Conservative Party? Yeah, I think that is the broader question here. In some ways, this, this protest in Ottawa right now is an example of the parties, kind of the, the struggle inside the party. Is it a party that wants to defend freedom, even if it includes uh, fringe elements uh, that we're seeing at this protest? Or does it want to be more moderate in its positioning? That's the struggle of the party. It's the struggle O'Toole has grappled with both during the leadership race and the election. The biggest fear that some Conservatives have tonight is that whether O'Toole stays or goes, that the party is fractured and that it could lead to a split of the coalition that was built and sustained for so long by Stephen Harper. O'Toole has called tomorrow a reckoning, but it may not just be a reckoning for him, but also the party. All right. Rosemary, thank you. Thanks.